Today's section of your workbook is section 5.3, and what we're working on today is non-parallel lines and their transversals. So, learning intentions. Number one is to be able to understand how a transversal interacts with two other lines. A transversal is nothing more than just a line that cuts through two other lines. And second is to be able to recognize corresponding, which are, we're going to use a letter F to represent, alternate interior, a Z, vertically opposite, an X, and interior angles on the same side of the transversal, which are C's. So given two lines and a line cutting through them, they'll make letters that look like F's, Z, X's, or C's, and you should be able to recognize these terms as those. Okay, so what I hinted at before was a transversal is just a line that cuts through two other lines. This line could also maybe not have to go through, but it could just touch both of the other sides. So let me get rid of that. So we have a transversal, which is a line going through two other lines. That is the start of it. So now that you understand that's the definition of transversal, we can start to look at some of these other terms. So one of our terms was dealing with an F angle. And an F angle represented corresponding. So two angles that make up corresponding angles would give us these two inside corners of our F. So here, these two would be F angles or corresponding angles because if we draw this out, Together, they make a capital F. Now, the thing about this is we can also look at upside down Fs. We could look at backwards Fs. And so that would be these angles. In this case, the backwards one would be these angles. So another set of corresponding angles would be these two would be corresponding because they share that upside down F. Okay? We have this angle here and this angle here. Okay? Now let's look at maybe another one here. If I go like this, here's my transversal. A backwards F would be angle 1 and 2 would also make a backwards F because we have our backwards F. So you need to be able to see all of these F shapes and know that the term for them is corresponding. Now let's look at another set here. Another one of our letters was a Z. And a Z, we're going to look at the two inside pieces of our Z. And the Z could also be backwards. Or the Z could even be made of obtuse angles. And a Z is called alternate interior angles. And they're interior because they're inside of the two lines. Okay? If these, this here is one main line, this here is our other main line, and then our transversal cuts through them, interior means it's on the inside of those lines. It's not out here or out here. It's on the insides. So they're interior and they're alternate, meaning they're on alternate or opposite sides of the transversal. So for example, these two make a Z because they're interior, they're inside the lines, and they're alternate or opposite sides of transversals. And hopefully you can see there is our letter Z. If I had another one, let's say I had a transversal that looked like this. So these would also be alternate interior. They're interior because they're inside. They're alternate because they're opposite side of the transversal. And this is the one that looked like an obtuse Z. So not what you typically think of as a Z.
Let's look at some more. So here's our two lines, line one, line two, and today we're dealing with non-parallel lines, so these aren't necessarily parallel, they're coming together, and a transversal. The next one we had the letter X, which it stands for vertically opposite. And vertically opposite just means opposite sides of the X. So these two are vertically opposite. And these two here are also vertically opposite of each other. So the two black dots vertically opposite, the two red X's vertically opposite. So if I was to look up here, angle 1 and angle 2 are vertically opposite. These lines that make X's, well the two across them are vertically opposite. Down here, 3 and 4 are vertically opposite. 5 and 6 are vertically opposite to each other. So 6 and 2 are not vertically opposite to each other. However, 2 makes an X with 1, 5 makes an X with 6. And now let's look at our last one. So again, two non-parallel lines, number one and two. Sorry, I'm going to have to fix that. Go like this. Okay, sorry. Um, so, now I have lines one, line two. They are not parallel, and I have a transversal that's cutting through the two lines. The last one is C angles. And C, think of it more as a block C, are, again, forwards, backwards, and they are called, um, sometimes they're called co-interior angles. You may see them called that. Or, the name I gave you earlier was interior angles on same side of the transversal. Remember, the transversal is the line that cuts through them. Here's our transversal cutting through our two lines. So they're interior, meaning they're inside of our two lines. Okay, so it's this side or this side. They're not out here, not out here. And they are interior, so again, interior, and the same side of the transversal. So these are both interior angles, both on the same side of the transversal. And hopefully you can see that these make up a letter C. So now we've seen them all. It's important that you are looking for Zs, Fs, Cs, and Xs. You should be taking some notes, maybe alternate interior, corresponding, interior on the same side, and vertically opposite. So here's an example of the way you're going to see some questions. It's going to give you two lines and a transversal, or it may give you more transversals. But in this case, I've given you two lines. I've named all the angles, okay, angle 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And the questions will say, as simple as, name two corresponding angles. So you need to remember that corresponding angles make the letter F. So two corresponding angles here would be 4 and 8 are corresponding. So angle 4 and angle 8 are corresponding. Name two vertically opposite angles. Vertically opposite are the x. So angle 1 and angle 4 make an x. They may, instead of saying just name two, they might give you one and then say what is a relation to it. So which is alternate interior to angle 4? Well, here's my angle 4. Now you need to know alternate interior is the Z angles. And if you can't remember that, well, interior means both inside. So my only guesses are 3, 5, or 6. Alternate means the opposite side of. So interior on the opposite side of 4 would be angle 5. That is my Z. My Z is right 
here. So angle phi would be alternate interior to z. More possible questions. I guess we didn't look at any two angles that are interior. So interior on the same side of the transversal. Well, 3 and 5 are both interior on the same side. That's our letter C. Okay. Another possible question might be, might look something like this. So I'm going to just name some of these points. I'll say this is A, this is B, this is C, and this is D. And the question might say, name a transversal to the lines AB and CD. Well, first, you need to know how to name some lines. So again, we're looking for AB and CD. We're looking for a transversal to those. So AB is this line. CD from C to D is this line. So name a transversal that goes between those two. Well, this certainly goes between those two. So AD would be a transversal between those two lines. But there's more than one answer here. B and D also goes between those two lines. So you could say that BD is a transversal to those two lines. This was a really short lesson for section 5.3. The important part is that you're understanding all of those terms and definitions. So I want you to do all the questions in chapter 5, section 5.3, you should be up to page 238. Once that's done, and you really need to do this well because section 5.4, you have to understand these definitions to do the next part because it's going to be dealing with all of these definitions and parallel lines. So good luck. Stay classy, Mac.